my way. The other thing that seems troubling is to sort of bypass or delegitimize or hijack the, the peer aspect of that. I mean, because these are men and women who on the battlefield have to trust one another and have to sort of trust the way those stories are told when they come back. This seems to really get at the very fiber of our military and our combat. Well, and also to trust their commanders. And if the commanders are telling them to act a certain way and they're working on this military code and, you know, there are, you know, most of the military does follow that code. But the ones that don't and the ones that, you know, you've heard President Trump in the past say, you know, oh, you know, we have too many rules about torture. We have too many other rules. What if these people that would have a tendency to get out of line say, oh, well, the president said it's okay. And, you know, I know that the president is going to have my back. And that's what's really concerning here, that I think he's inspiring the rank and file to try and be loyal to him not to the country, not to the service, and to the military. And, and to be fair, I, mean, I think the rank and file are, by and large, loyal to the yes. person atop the chain of command. But I, I, I think there is um, just a piece of the chaos. That, And again, I think this is an instance where he doesn't know his ignorance. No. He doesn't understand he doesn't, what doesn't it means to be the commander-in-chief. Yeah,